The established theory among most ecologists has been that the relationship between plants and soil determines the makeup of an ecosystem. Oswald Schmitz, an ecology professor at the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, turns that theory on its head. In a three-year-long field experiment, he found that predators have more influence than plants over how an ecosystem functions. What my research is actually showing is that it's the carnivores in the top of the food chain that are determining how much plant material is produced. And it isn't simply because the herbivores are changing the way they're chewing the vegetation, but it's, it's because of the herbivores changing the composition of the plants. So you're shifting dominance from highly productive species to less productive species, but, but a, a greater variety of those species. And so you're getting fundamental shifts in, in um, the, the, the structure of these ecological systems. Professor Schmitz observed that spiders have different hunting modes. It's those modes that cause grasshoppers to behave differently, which has an indirect effect on plants. To just sketch out the experiment, um, it, it involved uh, two kinds of uh, spider predators. One is a sit-and-wait predator that sits in the upper canopy and sits in the preferred food of the grass. The other is an actively hunting spider predator that roams widely throughout the canopy in search of the prey. So their, their hunting tactics are, are quite different and that causes changes in the way herbivores respond to them. The field experiment was conducted in a meadow up at our research forest in northeastern Connecticut. The experimental cages, the enclosure cages, they're cylinders about uh, three to four feet high. We stock grasshoppers and spiders into these and these, these cages are sunk over top of naturally growing vegetation and so we repeat the different kinds of combinations, what you call replication of the experiment. The professor's research can be applied to conservation in much bigger ecosystems, like Yellowstone National Park. The reason why the, the, the hunting mode, the, you know, the active hunting versus the ambush strategy are, are useful to understand um, is because you can group all predators, regardless of whether they're mammals or lizards or snakes, um, um, they, they can all be grouped into th these two broad categories of hunting mode. And so by understanding what they do in these small cages, we can extrapolate to figure out what an elk might do in response to a wolf in Yellowstone Park where the wolves are actively widely roaming predators versus a cougar that sort of tends to be much more of a sit and wait predator, an ambush predator. In the experiment, the prowling jumping spider forced the grasshopper to take shelter in goldenrod, encouraging the growth of other plants. So if we want to protect plant diversity, we actually want to protect the consumers of the plants, which is sort of counterintuitive. You know, if you're going to, if you want to conserve something, you got to remove the factor that's supposedly damaging it. Well, what we're showing is because of the indirect effects that happen, that is the, by virtue of the carnivores eating the herbivores, the her carnivores have indirect benefits to the plants and we gotta protect that kind of dependency also. Sort of the example that I try to always draw out is that it's really all about lines of dependency. If we understand who's connected to whom in a system, we can follow the chain of connections and make some reasonable predictions about if we disrupt this chain, we can make some predictions about what will happen down the, down the chain of connections. And taking that approach is a powerful way of really making some predictions about what environment changes are going to do to biodiversity. Professor Schmitz believes that an understanding of this dependency connection is at the heart of environmental studies. The core mission of the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies is really to train future leaders that can take the science, do the science, understand the science, but also translate it into policy and decision making. And I think what our strength is, is that students that graduate from the school appreciate the importance of both and, and, and the feedbacks between science and, and policy making. And so the challenge is really to reconcile what the trade-offs might be so that we come up with rational and reasoned solutions to some of these trade-off problems. For more information about Professor Schmitz, his research, and the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, visit environment.yale.edu.